So how can we treat diabetes? Well, one of the things we talked about is exercise and diet modification. So if they exercise and if they're um, eating a healthy diet and avoiding loss of sugar, then um, we can control it. If they're smoking, we want to get, to get them to quit smoking. And what's really important is that um, people who are diabetic, they do go for blood work here and there. And when they go for blood work, what they measure is something called the HbA1c level. And the HbA1c, the Hb stands for hemoglobin, A1c is the type of blood that they're testing for, the percentage of H, what they're actually testing for is the percentage of hemoglobin A1c in your blood. And the number should be 7% or lower. And the way they do this is they uh, measure this, you know, every two to three months, and then the average it's basically this number, 7%, for example, is the average of blood glucose they have in their bloodstream. So how much glucose or blood glucose they have. So if you look at this chart over here, if they have less than 5.7%, that's great. It means they are normal. They don't have diabetes. If it's between 5.7 to 6.4, they're pre-diabetic. And then diabetic is if they have 6.5% um, or higher. And this is important in dentistry because we always want to ask our clients what their HbA1c level is. So I know sometimes we can, um, what clients do is they will use a home glucose meter and they'll tell you what their blood glucose level is. Yeah, that's okay. But what I really, what we really should know is their HbA1c level because that is more accurate. So every time you see your client, ask them if they know what their HbA1c level is because if it's 7% or lower, we can treat them. But if it's not 7% or lower, um, sorry, if it's higher than 7%, so if it's uh, 7.2 or higher, 7.1 or higher, then we are concerned because um, if we were to debride, if we were to scale them, if they were to go for um, a periodontal surgery or something, it can affect the healing process. So HbA1c level is very, very important in dentistry. Now, let's look at some drugs. So we can take some drugs for diabetes in the mouth. We, there are uh, type 1 diabetics, they inject insulin. So it could also be injectable. And we're going to look at different drugs later on, but just to recap, two types of diabetes you should know. Type 1 diabetes is when you have no insulin in your body. And the reason why you have no insulin in your body is because the cells from the pancreas, known as beta cell, is not making insulin. So that's why we have no insulin in your body if you're type 1. Type 2 diabetes, you have insulin, but the insulin is not doing its job. It's not giving sugar to where it needs to go. And what's important here is if you make lifestyle modifications such as weight loss, exercise, and stop smoking, then you can control it and you may not even need medications, which is great. Now, if you do need medications for diabetes, there's many different types. Sulfonylureas, biquanides. This is a tricky one to say, but this is called, this is pronounced rather, thiazolidine dions. Thiazolidine dions. There's alpha glucidase inhibitors and meglitinides. So let's look at these drugs. So let's start with the sulfonylureas. So sulfonylureas, um, I'll just go back here. There are First generation, sorry, first generation agents and second generation agents, which are listed here. First generation agents are no longer used. So this was the first type of drugs that came out. They're no longer used because of their side effects. We use the second generation agents. And what's, um, what I want you guys to uh, focus on is that the type of drugs that I want you guys to know are the ones that um, starts with GL, so GL for glucose. Okay, so think of glipizide, think of... Um, Glyburide, and I'll show you a memory trick for that. And then remember metformin or fortamet or glucophage. So, sulfonylureas, and if you remember um, the drugs that I said that I want you guys to know is glyburide and glipside, glipizide. And what I want you guys to know is the GL from the beginning of these, um, the word or the medication name. GL stands for glucose. So when you see GL, think of glucose. And remember, glucose is sugar, sugar, think of diabetes. So what happens with this type of medication is it 
releases insulin. So we need insulin. So this medication will cause insulin to get released so that the sugar can go down in our body. And that's what we want. If we have too much sugar, we need that sugar to go down. So think of it like this. Glucose went down a slide. Slide sound kind of sounds like side, glipizide, and said, what a fun ride. And um, the medication that ends in ride is um, a diabetic medication. So side, how's that slide? Ride is ride. So glucose went down, and that's what this drug does. These drugs cause the sugar to go down or the glucose to go down in our body. And it said, what a fun ride. So this is a memory trick for you to remember that GL stands for glucose. When you think of glucose, think of diabetic medication. Anything that ends in side or ride, think of diabetes or a medication for diabetes. Now, when you're taking this medication, as we know, it decreases your sugar level. And because it decreases your sugar level, someone can get hypoglycemia. This is an adverse effect. Hypo, think of hypo, think of low. Hypo rhymes with low, so you have low sugar. And this is very common. And if someone takes this medication, too much rather of this medication, their sugar can get low. If they're not eating enough food, their sugar can get low. And so when someone's sugar gets low, we need to give them sugar. And so in our medical um, emergency kit, we would have dextrose, we would have sugar to give them. Um, it could be like a sugar tablet. It could be juice that you could give them. It could be icing sugar that you can give them or icing paste that you can give them to return their blood sugar to normal level. So biguanides is a different type of medication that you can take. Uh, for diabetes that a doctor may prescribe. And with this type of medication, it does the same thing. It what it actually does is it decreases glucose. So it lowers your blood sugar. And the type of drug that we are um, normally given by a doctor is known as metformin or glucophage or cordamax. So let's look at this. If you look at this word metformin, and if you look at the trade name Cordamet, do you see how it has the same letters? So the M-E-T comes from the M-E-T here. Oops, the M-E-T over here. So I should highlight that. And F-O-R-T, this part over here, fort, comes from, or the four, you can say it comes from here too. So it has the same letters, right? So that's how you can remember they're kind of the same thing. I remember G-L stands for, or glucose stands for glucose. So when you think of glucose, think of diabetes, think of um, glucose. That lowers blood sugar. All right, moving on. Another category of anti-diabetic medication is called alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. And what they do is they basically slow down digestion. And they, uh, when they slow down the digestion, it kind of decreases the blood sugar and it decreases the insulin level. It helps with the insulin level. And these are the drugs for that. This one, the one that's really hard to pronounce, again, I'm going to try, is called thiazolidines and thiazolidines, I can't even say it. So this drug over here, or this type of drug that is pronounced thiazolidines, is no longer used. And this has been taking off the market since November of 2011 because there have been cases of heart attack, stroke, and even death. So we don't use these type of medications anymore. Sometimes a doctor will prescribe a medication from this uh, drug category, which is meglutinides. And meglutinides is a newer type of drug that's out there. And what it does is it gives you more insulin. So you get more insulin. Remember the pancreas gives us more insulin from the beta cells. And when insulin is present and working, insulin will allow the sugar to go in the cells and that's what we want we want sugar to go in the cells so that our body can function sometimes what will happen is the doctor will say you need two types of drugs you need a combination of drugs you might need chloride and metformin to um, you know, work together and control your diabetes so that is another option so again, when you look at insulin, we need insulin to bind to a cell so that the sugar can enter the cell. The insulin has to bind to the receptor. And once the insulin binds to the receptor, the channel will open, the glucose channel will open so that the sugar can go in. Right now, there's uh, with someone who has diabetes, like type 1 diabetes, their 
is insulin, but it's not binding to the receptor and not working properly because the glucose cannot go in, right? You can see the X. But once the insulin binds, the glucose channel will open so that it can go in. And that's what we want. That's our goal. So insulin is um, injected, can be injected mostly for type 1 diabetes. They are injected into your body. And what we need to know for um, the dental situations is that if we're giving someone local anesthetic, so if we're giving them an injection to numb an area, and if that local anesthetic has epinephrine, remember to be cautious when we give them because it can cause high blood sugar when we give them epinephrine. So just watch that when you're when uh, you're given local anesthetic to someone who has diabetes. And then also for hypoglycemia, whenever you, you have a client who is diabetic in, in your chair, make sure you really be careful with that client because you want to make sure they took their insulin, make, you want to make sure they took their medication, and you want to make sure they've eaten before they come and see you because uh, we don't want them to have low blood sugar. So anytime someone has diabetes, make sure that we're checking for periodontal disease and that we are telling them the risk of um, or, or the link rather between periodontal disease and diabetes so they have a higher chance of losing their teeth because they have diabetes you can also check for all of these when they take medications they're always at risk for xerostomia burning mouth and fungal infections one thing with um, diabetes is that when someone has diabetes they're also at risk for other um, disorders such as heart disease, right? So high blood pressure and all that. So just check and see if they're taking any other drugs as well. And as we said, epinephrine, if you are giving someone epinephrine, it can, it would, through local anesthetic, it can affect their insulin levels. So uh, their blood sugar can get high, high when they take epinephrine. So watch the dosage when we're giving someone epinephrine who is diabetic.